Dialogue 3, Hypocrites and Counterfeit Christs Those whom I love have betrayed and abandoned me. They have slandered me for their own glory's sake, and they have spoken lies to gain attention and friendship from those who hate me. Those who declared their love for me but then turned away in bitterness because they could not face the truth of themselves, now seek the destruction of those who love me in faithfulness. Even our own families have spoken ill against you and against our devotions unto you, believing us misguided and far too zealous for the Lord. The enemy surrounds us, boasting of the violence that they yearn to do, for cause of our love for each other and for you. They go forth in wrath to bring about our downfall, working to take away our jobs and our dwelling, because of seeking you too passionately and speaking of you too freely. Our neighbors despise and avoid us, as if we carry a disease, and say vicious things against us, things that my mind cannot comprehend. They bring charges against us that cause agony to my very spirit. None will believe us innocent, and none will consider that the evil spoken is untrue and said for reasons of revenge. For we are strange and frightening to them, because we despise what they worship and seek what they only give lip service to. It is nearly a crime among my people to seek you, to place you at the center of life, to speak of you all day, and sing praises unto you in the tongues of angels by evening. I am treated as if I am evil for embracing your holy love and your righteous rage, and for admiring your deeds and names of an ancient age. I am thought of as contrary for wanting to walk in the footsteps of your true prophets and those who gave to men the very religions that humans claim to believe in. I am treated as an alien resident or as a foreigner in my own land for wanting all people to love and seek you with their whole heart, mind, and being. Was this not the commandment of Jesus and your messengers in days long forgotten? They wave the Bible in one hand and despise those who actually wish to live in the ways of the earliest Christians. They are ashamed of your names and your deeds of long ago. They admire the violent among men and hate the righteous judgments of your divine sovereignty. They call themselves your ministers, but do not speak out against the blatant violation of your revealed standards, and by their silence they give permission to every perversion and allow your grace to become a license for sin. They go to the churches and synagogues, and then go forth and commit adultery, fornication, drug abuse, and slander, and treat the earth as if it is their personal garbage pit and then go back to the church or synagogue with a clear conscience. I have heard people say in various ways, I love Jesus with one breath. Then in the next, I love getting high, getting drunk, going to bars, having sex as often as I can and will take whatever I can get. Then they add confidently, by the grace of Jesus Christ I can do what I want and will wear a crown in heaven. How is this possible? Why would these wicked ones go to heaven when they hate your righteous reign and see no justice in your true faces? And you answer me, and you, answer me, and you say, Why do you fret, little one? Did these same not welcome Jesus with shouts of Hosanna and then cry out, Crucify him, crucify him? Did not these same spirits cheer in the stands of the arenas of Rome as lions ate Christians? And did they not drink a toast to Nero in his gardens, lit by the faithful who were being used as human torches? Did these same souls not scream for the blood of the apostles and the butchery of the prophets? Did they not fill the ranks of the armies that marched against Mohammed? Did they not help the Roman authorities round up Christians? Or did they not aid the apostate church of Rome in hunting down and destroying the Cathars and the Arians? Did these same not praise the inquisitors as they went about their evil persecutions of Jews and Gnostics? And were they not counted among the Germans who sought to annihilate the Jews during World War II? Did these same not mock Jesus as he bore his cross to the hill of the skull? 
And have you not been told of the counterfeit Christ, who tells people what they want to hear and gives to mankind countless counterfeit gospels? Do you not understand, my little calf of heaven, that the Antichrist spirits have always been among men, and that the power of the apostate and the Jezebel have perverted the messages of the Spirit of God again and again? Do you not grasp that this is the very reason for the trial, the judgment, and now the sentencing of the human species, their case argued in the courts of aerial places since the time of Akhenaten? The prosecutor is winning, and the defense has less and less support to stand against the call for mankind's end. Is this not the very reason why you are sent to teach them and present unto them the verdict? Those who accept it, throw themselves upon the mercy of the court, and seek reformation, will be spared the worst of it. Those who reject it, throw it out with the trash, and seek to continue as they wished, will be marked by the beast and cut off forever. Endure patiently, O spotted lamb, for the time is but a little longer, and soon you shall be lifted up on the wings of your angel and carried to a distant aeon. Blessed are your names of old and new, and glory be unto your just and true decisions, O God, my refuge and my strength. Amen and Amen.